I thank everyone for being here. Congratulations. Uh, this is the probably the first customer appreciation type of um, webinar that we've hosted uh, in 2018 for Thinkorswim. I just want to give a great shout out to Steve Quirk. Most of you know him as Q. Uh, launching a TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim commercial right before kickoff at the um, Super Bowl. How sweet was that for all of us that uh, watch? Now, I, I didn't want to bash uh, Lionel Richie, so I, I, I mean, you know, there's something there uh, for Lionel Richie fans, of course, so we threw on before we started together a buddy guy, Chicago Blues legend, uh, show me the money. So with that theme, let's get started. Before we start talking about the PMC market indicator, please take a second to read this disclosure statement. Trading is risky. Stops do not necessarily limit your losses to uh, the intended amount since market conditions like we've just experienced, gap lower openings, things of that nature, may make it impossible to execute such orders. And this is the property of John Person and Persons Planet Inc. I am not affiliated or employed by Thinkorswim but I do have indicators on their platform. So, now that we've gotten that out of the way, what is the person's market catcher? PMC stand for person's market catcher. What does it do? What is it based on? It's based on relative strength analysis and not Wells Wilder's RSI indicator. It compares one market's performance to another to help identify positive or negative momentum changes in terms of percent I like to use this to compare an individual stock or a sector to the benchmark stock index like the S&P 500 or uh, in typically, uh, as we like to say, it's exactly what we do is compare individual stocks, ETFs, and, and some correlation to find out if there is a correlation with some commodities. So we can compare different sectors versus the S&P 500. And you can compare other ETFs or other stock indices against the S&P 500, like the Dow, the Russell, or the NASDAQ 100. Why would you do that? Well, quite frankly, recently in the last four months, or five months actually, we have seen, of course, the uh, in last year in 2017, a phenomenal rate of uh, outperformance in the NASDAQ or the QQQ, the large cap technology stocks, as well as uh, components such as Costco is another component in the queues, but also the Dow Jones Industrial Average. If you had a, the same amount of money to trade every day and had the same amount of risk but could get maybe 20, 30, or 40 percent better performance, meaning rate of return off your equity, that would be something that you would want to do, right? I mean, everyone would say, shoot, if I'm here trading and I'm sitting here uh, in, in, in with risk on the table, and I, I had a nice trade and the market moved, but yet I didn't make as much profit as being somewhere else, I would like to be notified that I should be somewhere else, right? Does that make sense to everybody? If so, then that's exactly what looking and comparing what the performance is with the S&P, the Dow, the Russell, or the NASDAQ 100. So with that said, the PMC, the person's market catcher, just to go through this first and foremost from an educational standpoint, and then we'll see if we have questions after. I'm sure in the next few slides we will um, be able to help you uh, locate, we'll share with you what it does, where it can be found. And the official launch, by the way, will be at the World Money Show in Orlando this Thursday and Friday. So actually, I will be doing and conducting a four-hour workshop at um, on Friday, February 9th at the Orlando Money Show. So if you are at the Orlando Money Show, uh, come over and, and see and uh, join the workshop. It's going to be quite a, a phenomenal event because the focus is on uh, algo strategies and automated trading systems. We'll also be talking about this product right here that's available for all of TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim clients. Now, what it does is it actually gives us in a numerical ranking order uh, identifying what stage the market is in. And the four stages that we rated is leading, weakening, lagging, improving. 
It enables us to possibly avoid landmines and ride trends or to see if a trend is about to end or begin. Right now, most major institutional players use a form of relative strength, and it's a buzzword. You hear a lot of people talking about comparing the performance of one product to the other. If it's outperforming, the theory is that people like momentum traders chase performance, and therefore they tend to jump on the bandwagon, and, and, and the stocks and the sectors that are the strongest tend to maintain their strength until things change, of course. And I think this tool will help make a user's life a little bit easier. The individual relative strength lines, once again, give us a pretty good clue about individual comparisons versus the benchmark. And the RS lines kind of give us an answer, is it good, bad, best, or worse against the overall market? Now, before we share this with you, and, and I think I'll just, just cut to the chase real quick, what did I mean by good, best, better, best? Well, real simple. This is um, a weekly chart on Kohl's. This is the person's market catcher. And as you can see, there's literally four colors. Bright blue, dark blue, red, and fuchsia. And then there is a zero line, like many of you probably use a MACD, moving average convergence divergence. So this helps us to identify if a market is going up and all of a sudden you start to see the relative strength weaken and we get a PPSL signal. Now that arrow is a bearish momentum indicator. What I have on my screen right now is the person's PPS indicator and the person's market catcher. This is a relative strength tool. So is this a valid sell signal? Is the market at this point in time, is it weakening or strengthening against the, the overall market? Bright blue means it's outperforming the market. Dark blue means it's weakening. And when it goes to a red phase, it means it's lagging the overall market. And then all of a sudden, as you start to see the market, the fuchsia color, and the histogram bars are getting, they're, they're making higher lows. And how can you see that the market's making higher lows? Well, for starters, we have a moving average component. So the moving average component helps us to identify that the market is trending in a uh, outperformance, underperformance, weakening, and improving condition. And what we're looking for is we're looking for stocks compared to the overall benchmark, in this case the S&P 500, that are starting to show relative strength improvement against the overall market. And when we start to see that improvement and followed by PPS buy signals, and you start to get a bright blue, this shows that the market is outperforming and it's starting to gather stronger momentum in the market. So a moving average component that is trending higher shows that the market is gaining much better strength and momentum. So a trader that is looking to be long the market, or if a trader thinks that, oh, it can't go any higher, may want to check to see what the relative strength performance is compared to the overall market. And this, again, was Kohl's. This is a weekly chart. And this is from the time period last year, over the last six months, that, of course, Kohl's started to outperform the overall market. So the whole thing when I talk about the moving average in yellow is in a weakening stage when it's below the zero line. And again, the moving average turns white when the relative strength is turning less negative is exactly what this is supposed to do. Now, we have custom and you have the ability to change those colors. You can edit the PMC. I have my moving averages a different color than what I've described, and you can change them as well. But typically speaking, when the moving average is turning yellow, it means that the market or the stock is starting to outperform the market. And you may want to look at bullish strategies or look for buying opportunities in the marketplace. 
Now, let's move forward and explain a little bit more what this can do for everyone. When a stock, and this is a screenshot of McDonald's. Now, McDonald's has been an interesting trade for quite some time. Is in fact, if you notice that at around 170 since approximately November, when it made this peak high, this was a frustrating trade for me because I couldn't sell it and I didn't want to buy it. And the options, because of the low implied volatility, and I know a lot of you guys out there know exactly what I'm talking about, there weren't great strategies out there. But the one thing that this tool helped us to identify was, if you look at the relative strength, and you look at this high, and as the market moved higher, the relative strength indicator is doing what? It's moving lower. And as the market made newer highs, the relative strength moves lower. Then, as the price even continued to move higher, the relative strength was weakening. This did not tell you, and this is an important observation, it doesn't say go short. In fact, this is a buy signal. You have a buy signal in a weakening relative strength conditioning market. What it tells you is that the market is vulnerable for a decline. This is, and it's hard to see, but there was another sell signal right here. This market generated a sell signal, and when it has a sell signal, when the relative strength is weakening, that's your sweet trade. That's the kind of setup and the pattern that you're looking for. The market showed a longer, unusual, very historically unusual, longer time frame of bearish divergence. Price made newer highs, and the indicator made newer lows. So it was telling you that the market was vulnerable. And at this point in time, whether or not you wanted to be as an option writer, if you had any opportunities in using the person's pivots to help identify, hey, we're at a resistance. McDonald's is looking like it might run into trouble. I'm not certainly chasing this thing to buy it. So half the battle of making money is deciding when not to buy. So with the relative strength showing you testifiable evidence that it was underperforming the relative strength or the performance versus the overall market, number one, RS is weak because it's red bars, and it's below the zero line, right? Number two, the stock was trading at per person's pivot resistance. So I'm not going to buy a stock at person's pivot resistance, no matter how good everyone thought this market was going. Um, and again, it, it, did, it did find itself in, into a, even though we have rallied back, it generated, who knows, if you had a stop in the market, you're going to see, as the disclosure t talked about today, a little bit of uh, slippage on that um, order, that's for sure. So this was not just a cherry pick stock. There were so many stocks like this this year that were forming bearish divergence. We were looking for a correction in the market, not based on volume or any other indicator, but based on this person's market catcher indicator tool. Now, here's Home Depot. And this is another one that was pretty, as you can see, the um, greatest thing about Home Depot is the fact that we have, way back in November, the relative strength, as you can we go back a little bit further, the market started to outperform, and as you can see, the blue bars, the stock started to show relative strength. And then all of a sudden, the stock started to show relative weakness, because the stock market at this point was going up, Home Depot was going sideways, so it was underperforming the market for darn close to, what, about a month and a half. But all of a sudden, right in here, around right before Thanksgiving, or option expiration, what happened is we started to see the relative strength bars, fuchsia, and blue. And at this point in time, cos cor corresponding with a arrow buy signal, it's hard to see it, but it's a blue buy, uh, PPS buy signal, against pivot, person's pivot support, was sharing that, hey, this is... This is a market that might see some upside 
and therefore we did get a launch and this, the market took off. So those are kind of uh, patterns that we want to share with you about what is the relative strength tool good for. It's, it's not just good for uh, defining when not to be in a market, but it's also helping to confirm a buy signal that the market is getting uh, more, it's getting stronger relative to the other market or the benchmark in, the, in this case is the S&P 500. Now, what's happening is as the Home Depot starts to rally, it's still in a strong relative strength performance. Why? Because it's above the zero line. Even though the bars are dark blue, it's telling you that at this point in time, if you don't tighten up your stops or take some money off the table, we are making newer highs with newer lows in the relative strength indicator. So at that point, this would be a pattern called bearish, what I call bearish divergence, is when the price of the stock goes up and an indicator goes down. If I could draw a straight line with a mouse to save my life, why do I call it divergence? Well, if the line is going up and the indicator is going down, they are and have diverged away from each other. Some people call it convergence. I call it divergence. Bearish divergence and bullish convergence. Just semantics, that's all. But you can clearly see, here's a situation that, again, at pivot resistance, a sell signal ensues when the market is in a weakening relative strength condition. And therefore, you're going to most likely see a, a market decline. So these were kind of some of the stocks that were very uh, prominent in sharing with us information that there was bearish divergence. Now this is Exxon Mobil. And if you have learned and picked up from the technique over here, the market, the relative strength is improving. And we have a buy signal when the bars have turned fuchsia. As the market starts to improve, you have this relative strength showing that the market is gaining more traction. It's still positive until about right here. In fact, as it makes newer highs in the market, the relative strength weakens. All of a sudden, you get a sell signal. The relative strength helps to confirm that sell signal, and the market took a dip. Market starts to go up, showing some relative strength. And as you can see, we get a, a, a little contraction in volatility. As you would say, a narrowing of price ranges in here. And that contraction would show that the market is getting ready for a move one way or another. Well, if you had this tool, you might look at the relative strength is starting to outperform again. It's starting to improve. And look what happens. A PPS buy signal when we turn bright blue and we see liftoff. Now, Exxon, this is a really strange thing, the way the slices of these trades have taken place, right? If you start to look at where we're at, at near the highs and you look down below and you say, I've been long. This has been a nice ride. However, something is wrong with this picture because the market from a newer high has made a what? Weakening relative strength condition off the indicator. This is telling you that the market is extremely vulnerable. And by the time the PPS sell signal kicked in gear, the relative strength of the market had already turned negative. Now, this is a indicator based on percent changes of this stock versus the S&P 500. This is not a volume indicator. This is the relative strength tool. And this can be used on a daily chart. This could be used on a weekly time frame. In fact, it can also be used on a 60-minute time frame for swing trading. So this is kind of the, 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 um, the benefits of using this tool, which is really cool, because you see over here, it's giving us a numer the numeric value and the moving average value right within the box. So if instead of having to look at things, I know that it is at the weakest point that it's ever been in the last nine months. This is a negative reading for Exxon. And as it 
gave that cell signal, we will be eventually sharing with you how to incorporate Thinkorswim, the scans, with an added criteria of the PMC with weakening numbers or strengthening numbers for buy signals. Can you imagine if you could get a confirmation of a scan, show me scans of how many stocks are generating a PPS buy signal with improving relative strength. Might be pretty helpful for us to filter out better stock trades. Now, here's a favorite, because we actually covered this uh, thanks to, and I don't know if he's in this room right now, but Dave P., I always call him my brother from a different mother. He's out in California. He's always always asking me, hey, what earnings play do you got, John? What earnings play do you got, John? And, and so one of our, our things about Starbucks was, I go, you know, Starbucks had this big launch up here, and it had a very significant uh, weaker relative strength to the overall market. While it rallied and made a new higher high, as you can see, one, two, three. Number three peak is higher than number two peak. Number two is higher than number one. But number one is lower than number two and lower than number three. So the higher Starbucks went, the weaker it was getting against the overall market. Again, this was earnings came out, it was negative, and it was probably already in the fix. Whoever in the know is, and, and I'm not saying there's insider trading information amongst institutional traders, but the fix was more likely in because the market had generated a bearish divergence indicator pattern using the PMC. So this is pretty cool in that content. So I think just as a review, the person's market catcher weakening to leading stage is identified when the histogram reading is below the zero line and the bars turn magenta, the move below the zero line, and then it turns white or yellow, whichever you care to, to change. And I think when you start to use this and start to see the tools, and of course, as I pointed out, this is probably one of the most important features about this tool is to look for convergence and divergence setups. That right there, as I was just explaining, is very key critical. So once again, We've just shared with you a few stocks, important ones, widely held, earnings uh, extraordinaire, and other stocks that have uh, come out. Let's take a look at how does this compare using an ETF, because a lot of you, and as well as myself, trade ETFs. And in the XRT, which uh, under normal conditions is not a, you know, a high-flying uh, velocity type momentum product, but XRT, as you can see, one of the things, as the stock started to move lower in price, what was the relative strength doing? It was increasing, correct? So we made a newer low in the price of the product, and the indicator was making a higher low. How do we know it was making higher lows? Because the moving average is kind of pointing up. So at this point in time, we know that we have a potential bullish convergence. The PPS buy signal kicks into high gear, helping to confirm that the momentum of the market is changing. And then all of a sudden, we get a liftoff in the relative strength. The sweetest spot of the rally came from where the PPS and the magenta kicked into gear. And of course, it didn't do too bad. I mean, it just moved sideways for a while, and that shows that the relative strength, while still positive, it was just weakening. It doesn't generate a sell signal. It's just saying it's weakening. And what does that mean? It wasn't really going anywhere. XRT was just kind of moving up. So being in the right spot at the right time is something that will be, I think, useful for you to get more efficiency, more efficient use out of your capital. Where to be and where not to be is the, I think, one of the main important things. And again, as the product starts to make newer highs, I think everyone would start to say, wait a minute, the uh, momentum or relative strength of the market is weakening. 
the market has made a significant higher high. Why is the relative strength made a significant lower low? Because the market is getting ready or was vulnerable for a decline. So when you get a sell signal, when you are in a negative or bearish divergence pattern, you're going to more than likely get a more meaningful sell-off. So the two best trades of this product were the buy signal with the person's pivot study, PPS, against the relative strength improvement, and the divergence with the sell signal, how they corresponded together. Now, if we can get, and the next lesson we'll get as we uh, evolve how to run scans on this, and many of you are already probably working on it as we speak right now. All right? Now, this is Amazon. It's kind of an interesting trade here because even myself, Amazon defied gravity. And as you can see, the performance, and again, this is a weekly chart, and this was a snapshot taken probably a half hour before we began. I wanted to make sure that I didn't use older information, and yet I wanted to use current information just in case there was some technical difficulties. Um, always thinking ahead. As you can see, the market was not moving anywhere. It was going down. We got a buy signal, and the relative strength was still negative. But all of a sudden, it wasn't until an earnings report came out, and again, it was starting to move higher, but it was that earnings report and the strength of the momentum of the market. So if people said, listen, it can't go any higher. What's different about some of the other stocks that I just shared with you? Stocks were making new highs while the relative strength was going down. But with Amazon, the relative strength is going up still. Even with this week's trade action. With this week's trade action, this is where, or the, the, the kind of uh, performance Amazon has put in. And I think Amazon closed today at 442. It's actually, it closed two bucks higher than here, 442. Can you, I mean, that's, that's pretty crazy, the fact that the, everyone's calling it that the market's melting down, it's this big crash, and yet Amazon, it's still higher than it was a week and a half ago, right? So the relative strength has not given any type of indication that this is a short. If this had been bearish divergence, if the market had gone up and the relative strength had gone down, then, then we would say, hey, I think at the very least, we have information that might say we could stay in a pause and maybe selling some out of the money call spreads could be a, a, a thought process, but certainly not selling short based on what we're, we've learned so far. How is everyone following the, the, the indicator and the instructions that I'm giving so far? Mike's saying good, and um, we have um, the font is so small on my computer that I pretty much cannot see it, um, to be honest with you. But we've got a lot of good, good so far, so that's awesome. Um, thank you for that. All right, so here's um, an interesting thing. If you go to our, I did a, a series of YouTube videos. Uh, because I'm, a lot of people were following with this uh, other product that we created called an, uh, an Algo Optimizer, an automated trading uh, program. And we did a video yesterday. It seemed to get a lot of traction and uh, to show the performance. It also showed a couple things that we were in, like this stock, TripAdvisors, which had a phenomenal day. I mean, we're up 15%, 17% because we got in this stock a little early. And I mean, just to prove a point, the entire stock market's crashing, and TripAdvisors, if you look over the last couple days, was doing nothing but going up. Uh, I don't want to say sneakier than a fart in church, but I think it was pretty much sneakier than a fart in church, right? Because now it's probably on the news that it's up 15%. It was the best performing stock, I think. And, and what helped us to capture this trade uh, was, in fact, using the person's market catcher. 
while we were looking for a correction in the overall market to go down, my concept was I wanted to get specific stocks and work orders to get into uh, to, on this dip. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. This dip was dippier than I thought, and there's no, no doubt about that. But there are some stocks that we just, even with this huge dip, we didn't get filled on. It was amazing. Like, for example, Twitter, Hess, uh, Tractor Supply. I thought with this type of movement in the market, we would see at least a 5-10% move down in certain stocks, and it just didn't happen. So when I just mentioned a minute ago that you can utilize this tool on an hourly basis, that's exactly what you're looking at is an hourly chart. Which way is the market moving to you right here? Thin, really not doing much of nothing, right? But as it's moving sideways, what color is the, the uh, relative strength person's market catcher? Not only is it fuchsia, but the bars are getting making higher lows. And if that is difficult to really examine, what is the moving average? Well, first off, the moving average was blue, which means it's in a negative state, and the moving average changed to yellow and is pointing up, which means it's in a strengthening state. And all of a sudden, you're in a relative strength improvement outperformance with a buy signal, and this should tell us to stick with the trade and that the momentum of the market is positive. Um, this was quite an amazing uh, situation. In fact, we did the video yesterday and even told people in yesterday's video, yeah, we're long trip advisor here at, at around 35 and a half was our, our number. Um, so with that said, kind of, kind of a, a fun trade for trip advisor using a combination of the right tools. First and foremost, um, I want to point out, this is the person's, as you can see, monthly pivots. Is the red line higher than the prior red line? Is the current green higher than the other green? And of course it is, right? So at the end of the month, in January, it was showing that TripAdvisors technically was in a bullish bias using the person's pivot indicator. It was targeting a higher high and a higher low. And so we were kind of looking at as the, also in addition, the relative strength is improving. So you're in a monthly bullish bias and you're in an improving relative strength condition. So this is kind of a great tool for confirming and helping to find better trading opportunities. So I mentioned about convergence and divergence patterns. And so right now, as you can see, this is kind of a, we're got, we've got both going on right now. As you can see, this is General Mills. We have a double top. We have higher high, and the relative strength was weakening. So what happened to General Mills? It's kind of not a bad story, but it's not a good story. I mean, it depends if you got long or if, you're, if your financial advisor thought that General Mills was a good trade at 59, then they're going to like it at 53, or was that stop loss orders, or was that someone's stop that got, got hammered out of the market? I don't know. But here's an interesting, and this is what I think will be good moving forward, because this in 2018 is going to be a very exciting year. Interest rates are on the rise. Everyone's in stocks pretty on, in the, on the world sense. People have been pumping uh, the long side of emerging markets for the last six months. If you've followed anything on CNBC, Raise your hand. How many analysts are saying your better performance is in emerging markets? Better performance emerging markets, emerging markets, emerging markets. Okay, well, so if we see interest rates start to climb higher, and one of my biggest fears, and I wrote about this, and I know some of you are subscribers and you're sitting here in my room, raise your hand if you read this with me that I wrote, that I put out. And it simply stated, I wasn't afraid of the FOMC meeting. My biggest fear was 
the results of the unemployment report to see if wage cost pressure were starting to go up. That's the key. Jobs, 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 but a rise in wages creates wage cost inflation. ECI is an actual report. It's called the Employment Cost Index. And that's one of the components the Federal Reserve has been watching for years. I mean, we're talking even back when Bren Bernanke started quantitative easing. And so I think what started this uh, downdraft was the expectations of, and I know that people saying it's because of a new Fed. Well, sure, it's a new guy, kind of not sure. But then all of a sudden, improving numbers in Europe, what does that stand for? Improving numbers in Europe means maybe Mario Draghi and the European Central Bank, right, a concerted effort among central bankers, may start to reduce, eliminate quantitative easing, and start to normalize interest rates. Interest rates go up, and again, we've already had multiple interest rate hikes. It may put downward pressure or at least uh, a warning shot across the bow. If, if the Fed is perceived to have been behind the eight ball and they're going to do three rate hikes, who says they can't throw in a half point rate hike because no one saw that coming? So if the jargon starts to talk, and I think the thinking was, friends, that the Fed with the wage cost component of the monthly employment report, that's what really started this whole thing, kind of to a degree, right? Or it, it helped accelerate it. So. I think we're going to be looking more as we go forward month to month at ECI, employment costs. We're going to be looking at inflation numbers a little closer, and we're going to be looking at the hourly wages. The two components that I think everyone should be focused on is the hourly uh, hours work, how many hours uh, a week. If they increase, if overtime increases, and if, if um, dollar per hour uh, component increases. So those are the kind of the important things moving forward at the stock market. But I think the technical indicators are going to help us. And, and that's one of the key items. The technical indicators are going to help us. This is a um, stupid little company. It's not Momo. It's not Roku. It's not Riot. It's not Baba. It's not Baidu. It's General Mills. All right. But General Mills, food staple, consumer staple, food packaging, makes lower lows. And look what's happening as it makes lower lows. The relative strength is improving here. And you get a buy signal as the market breaks out and starts to show the outperformance to the market. Again, what is the sweet spot of this move? When the combination of my PPS indicator with improved relative strength fires off. And that the same kind of scenario that you see. What's the danger? When you start to see a market that maybe flatlines or possibly makes a slight higher high divergence, and you start to see weakening structure of the relative strength, and you get bearish divergence in the indicator. So even though this made a slight higher high, this actually may have hurt people uh, if you were a buyer up here and if you had a stop somewhere there, you know, your stop got filled. And it happens. But I think this is the tool, and I want to go back, that it's not going to help give you every single winning trade under the sun, but it's going to do something that's going to help you identify what stage the market's in. It's going to help you uh, enable one to avoid a landmine. Buying the high in General Mills with a weakening divergence in relative strength would have helped you to avoid a landmine. And that's going to make your uh, overall life easier. So I wanted to make sure that we reaffirm what did these boring bullet points really mean and what, did, what was I referencing. I was referencing if you get a higher high and a weakening relative strength and you think that this stock is going to go up and you get long, you may it might make your life slightly easier by avoiding a landmine. That's one of the key points that I think this, this indicator will help stock traders uh, to achieve. So between using it against maybe Amazon, ETFs like XRT, TripAdvisors, or General Mills, 
these are the kind of things that I think are going to be very useful for uh, traders. Now, let's go to where to find this tool. It should be, if you go up to studies, and you go to add a study, there's two ways. There's John, there's a few Johns. You want to make sure you get the right John. It's John Person. And if you see John Person's name, you will see PMC indicator right there. And all you got to do is click on it, and lo and behold, what happened is you got the indicator right there on your screen. This is a relative strength tool. This is live. Let's take a look at, um, well, let's see. We've done Amazon. Uh, what's another one? Uh, here's one that I, I always like to do this because a good client of ours, who's not really a client, he's more like a friend. He's more like f family. And I don't know if Arthur's in the room today, but um, Arthur um, has always, if we did a seminar, and I can't remember how many years ago it was, maybe eight years ago in Las Vegas. And he goes, John, I'm in Sarepta Therapeutics. What do I do? I said, man, the implied volatility on this thing is like, 800 percent I'm not joking I think it was 400 percent or something I said Arthur you're in this stock I mean you got to sell you got to sell calls against this right now I mean there's no earnings coming up but what it was was some report that was coming out I said you're gonna get more money from selling an out-of-the-money call than what the stocks worth right now it was crazy and then the next day I guess the FDA rejected their bid and I, I guess we could probably find that on a chart if I really wanted to look hard for it um, it, it was quite a number of years ago, but in any event, this is a weekly chart on Sarepta Therapeutics. So again, if you follow the path of the market, and while a lot of stocks are very uh, jittery, and you get that jitteriness out of the market, if you notice the relative strength is starting to improve, it's starting to see a very slight bias trend moving up. And all of a sudden, you're starting to get, you get that high-closed doji type of pattern. There's a doji, there's the high-closed doji, a PPS buy signal. And while the PPS buy signal fires off a buy, you get a, a relative strength that is improved after a weakening condition. Um, and then all of a sudden, the relative strength is still improving, and the stock continues to do better. Right now... If anyone was looking at being a buyer, I mean, we don't quite have a strengthening or a, a massive divergence pattern. It's still relatively strong against the overall market, but it's not something that I would jump out and buy right this second. This is just, I'm just picking on Sarepta just because it's the first thing that came to my mind. So now we know where to get it. Now you know what it can be used for and what time frames can we use it. The one thing you cannot use it for is to compare the S&P 500 to the S&P 500. It looks like flatlined. It's dead. Why? Because it's, it's really comparing the performance of the benchmark S&P 500 to this product. But you can do consumer staples. You can do utilities which is kind of a fun situation to look at because a lot of the sectors like utilities, which led the big bond debacle, sell signal up here. How many people have learned what bearish divergence is with this pattern so far? Market made a higher high, and the market now moved slightly lower, forming a bearish divergence pattern. The, so looking at utilities, I mean, whether it's, a weekly chart like this is, let's go back and look at a daily chart. And now, last but not least, let's keep XLU, and I'll just change to a daily chart here real quick, gang. Ouch. Holy moly, right? I mean, if I could turn back time, and I'm not playing share song, I'm not going to do it. I can't do it. I mean, I just played Buddy Guy for everybody. I'm not going to share. But she does have a song, If I Could Turn Back Time. As you can see... You know, the market's looking pretty healthy. We've got a buy signal. we got fuchsia. The market's starting to outperform. This was back in October. Um, I don't need both of these studies. I just wanted to share with you my version and the version that's on Thinkorswim. 
So as you can see, the relative strength started to improve and the utility started to go up. But now they, they rallied, they broke, they came back highs, a double top ensues. And as the market's trying to rally, look at the relative strength. What's going on with this market? You get a sell signal and the relative strength turned negative. And the market starts to come back up and you think maybe this is a great buy, but the relative strength is really negative. Oops, it didn't last too long, did it? And now, landmine, a disaster. I mean, a disaster. Now, at this point in time, we're starting to show bullish convergence. We don't have a buy signal, but I would not be short utilities anymore. At this point in time, I would not be short utilities for two reasons. The relative strength is starting to improve. It has not generated a buy signal. It could chop around a little bit, but I would be waiting for a positive move and a PPS buy signal. And that does not guarantee that you're going to make a lot of money. It just helps you to identify the momentum of the market is improved. But when we get, and if we get, and right now we are starting to see lower prices than over here, and the relative strength is making a higher low, we are in a setup of a bullish convergence currently with the utility XLU ETF. Okay? So you can take a look at the different uh, ETFs and compare them against the overall market, and it is uh, an acceptable thing. So if you take a look at XLK, XLU, healthcare, you're going to get a reading of what the strength of the market or that sector is. Currently, technology relative to the XLK sector relative to the S&P is it's slightly outperforming. It's 0.21. It's a blue number. It's positive. So we don't have a buy signal, but it's turned positive today, one day. Now, leading up to last week, when people say, John, why were you looking for a correction? Well, I think we've been looking for a correction since 20, 2017, but as everyone has for a lot of things. But we really were looking for and tightened up more of an identification of a correction because of several things. Seasonally, we see that January break. It never came. February sometimes can be a little bit weak. But more and more sectors started to show an impending weakening condition against the overall market, meaning bearish divergence. So I was a little selective in what stocks to buy and without having insights of saying, well, why didn't you go short? One of the things that instead of going short the overall market, we've been trading an algo system and we've had an algo system on the VXX, which did go long, which is the inverse of being short the spiders. So it's been a pretty insane ride and I'm not here to really um, tout much of that because I wanted to really devote today for Thinkorswim and um, just go from there. But one of the things that I would point out, and I do use two different platforms, three actually for market analytics and TradeStation, one of the things that I want to point out is besides looking at my PPS indicators, this is a weekly chart, we also look at this tool called the Advanced Decline Analysis. So what's really strange about this week's sell-off, okay? What's really strange about this week's sell-off, while it was pronounced, the Russell came right within person's quarterly pivot resistance. And do you notice which way this fuchsia line is pointing? It's pointing up. It's actually made a higher, it's made a higher high and it's made a higher low. This is the advanced decline of the Russell. Now, the Russell may be something that could outperform the overall market if the advanced decline or the breadth starts to move positive before prices. This is a very interesting situation. So to confirm that, how would I use this tool? 
Well, let's take a look at the IWM versus the S&P 500. So here's an interesting concept. And, you know, we would get this thing called the January effect, right, normally. And this year we didn't quite get a January effect. In fact, we didn't get much out of the Russell whatsoever. We did get earlier in late uh, September an incredible buy signal, which we not only wrote but promoted and told everyone about, that the market was outperforming. The relative strength was improving. In fact, we had a mentoring class here in my office, and this was something that we went over, and, and we told the entire ch trading chat room, we've got an incredible uh, situation. We have an outperformance relative to the rest of the market, and what's exciting is this tool is available now on Thinkorswim. But anyway, this was a buy signal when the market was improving. We were seeing, if I started off by saying, if you had X amount of dollars and you wanted to get better performance and better rate of return, more efficient use of your capital, it would be nice to see, hey, instead of being long S&Ps right now, maybe we should be long the Russell. And so you would get a stronger buy signal um, in that time frame. Now, after that market rallied, one thing happened, gang. While the Russell did go up more, it didn't outperform the S&P 500. It started to say, hey, you know what? If you're in this, you might want to get out of it because the bulk of the trade, the big trend really, you know, it's already taken place. Can we look at this and compare the Qs to the S&P 500? And yes, we can. And we can say, you know what? We got more upside out of the Qs. We started to fall down. And yes, we got more upside out of the queues in that last run in January. So the market was, and this tool can help you give not your opinion, but testifiable evidence, something that other institutional players are using, a very similar type of anal analytics. And it's, at, uh, I think, more graphically enhanced, numerically enhanced, with a moving average concept. And it helps identify whether or not you should be in a sector or out of a sector, okay? Now, um, this is, um, I think, going to be a very great addition to the person's indicators for Thinkorswim. But once again, it, is, it is, does not give you where stop losses go. It doesn't give you profit targets. It won't give you holding periods. Um, but I believe we will be working on our next uh, at least in the, in the near term, I will be working on sharing how to utilize this. First thing is, by the way, here it is. Now you, you may want to take a, a gander. It's like it's something new in front of you. Is it efficient? Is it something that you can benefit from? I think if you're trading equities, if you're trading ETFs, if you're trading um, a basket of stocks, absolutely. It's going to be very beneficial and considering the fact you can utilize this not just on a uh, hourly basis, but you can use it on, um, I think one of my better uh, time periods is the four hour, a half a day time frame. You can also use it again on a daily basis, which is probably more efficient and more importantly, a weekly time frame to give you a longer term directional trend identification of when possibly a market might be outperforming the overall market. When you start to see the change from red to fuchsia and then bright blue with a PPS buy signal, that's your go signal. That's your go signal. All right. As you can see here, um, the market started to lose a little bit of its outperformance, but it's, it's in an uptrend. It's still moving. And then all of a sudden, bingo goes in ballistic outperformance to the overall market. So I wanted to say congratulations. It's been a while since, and, and, and Thinkorswim worked hard on getting this. Of course, they had a shopping list of things to get done. Um, and of course, with the markets, the most important thing is execution, is to make sure that the platform works. And of course, adding one more indicator 
um, you know, it, to, to go through the, the, um, the rigors of getting it done with everything that everyone has to do. David Kears, I wanted to thank David. David had a lot to do with obviously getting this up. J.J. Kinahan, come on, J.J., shout out for J.J., because J.J. was another one that was very instrumental in helping to get this up and launched. And um, I think Thinkorswim still, with their execution, options, strategy, it's um, you know just a fantastic uh, product for all to use and uh, in conjunction with other um, platforms. So with that said, that concludes our time today. Um, Michael said, best Z I've seen yet. I can't, I mean, seriously, the font is like 0 0.025 with this HDMI computer laptop. Um, Steve, this will never be available on Tasty Trade. Um, keyword was never. No, but thank you. Um, never say never, they say. Love Tom, but not, not on, on Tasty Trade, no. How do you find this in TOS? Well, we'll try it one more time. It's pretty simple. If you go to Studies and you go to Add a Study, there's two ways you can find this. Once again, great way to conclude today's session. Scroll down to my name. Make sure you get the right John, though. It's John Person. It stands for PPS, stands for Person's Pivots, and the PMC Indicator. So this is a relative strength tool. This is a momentum bullish and bearish indicator, or as some people like to reference it, buy and sell indicator. And again, person's pivots, which can be utilized on various time frames, daily, weekly, monthly so far on future uh, um, on um, trade station. In the future, we are looking, and everyone's been asking to put up my quarterly pivots up there. I know, but um, right now we got what we got, and this is an amazing, an amazing tool for um, what what it does, and also for um, what institutions, at least putting you on the same type of analytical tools an institution would use to make trade decisions. The relative strength indicator and that little hidden, sudden, secret type of improvement, slowly but surely. You know, if you take a look at the cues in here, a flattening market, where is it going? All of a sudden, the relative strength is showing it's outperforming the market. It's getting ready for a blast off, and bang, it does break out. So this is probably one of, going to be one of your favorite confirmation tools uh, available to you for equity trading and, and, and moving forward. So with that said, I thank you. That does conclude our time. I'll see you at the next event. We'll be in Orlando at the World Money Show. And uh, I invite everyone to visit our website, which we have lots of great information and videos. This will be posted on our website. If you want more information about what we do, our website at Persons Planet, I'll just go through a couple things for some of you. If I could bring this into view. Okay, so first and foremost, we have resources where we have instructional videos. If you click on resources, then instructional videos. Um, there's a few up here which talk about, well, here's one with the PMC already up. This is from a year ago, right? So you can, this one will be probably posted pretty soon. And in addition to that, if you click on our YouTube channel, this is some really um, great little things about the TOS PMC indicator. We put that out, I don't know, a week or two ago. Uh, I. This is not sent out to a lot of people. This was just posted. I would watch this one, too. Just look at these are just little snippets. You can see 14 minutes, 16 minutes, and you can see what we're talking about, the algo system. Pretty, pr pretty phenomenal. Um, when I talk about the algo system, I don't want to tell you about today's performance. If you're a day trader, if you trade e-mini S&Ps, if you trade the mini Dow, uh, today was just, as one of our clients said, man, this thing is sick, sick performance. It was crazy. So. Um, 
only a trader would appreciate the word, this is sick, right? Because that's a very positive term. Most people, you say, hey, man, that's sick. They, they think, you, what, you got the flu? Anyway, um, I thank you all very much. And again, uh, lots of information over there at Persons Planet. Until next time, thank you. And everyone, have a great rest of the trading week. Thank you.